Okie doke. Yes. Are they all in? Are they all in, Jamie? Take their names, write them in the book, please, Jamie. In the black book, please, if you don't mind. Yeah. We're all late, all late for the choruses. Okay, we'll have a couple of choruses and then we'll have a little press off, shall we? All right. Is this our first one? Okay, then. Soon and very soon. Yes, please, Sean. Soon and very soon We are going to see a king Hallelujah Soon and very soon We are going to see Hallelujah Soon and very soon We are going to see the king Hallelujah Hallelujah We are going to see the king No more crying there Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Jesus will be there, Jesus will be there, we are going to see the King. Jesus will be there, we are going to see the King. Jesus will be there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King. What's next? Well in groups, 507. Shout his glory to the earth. Chosen by the Lord and magnify his great and mighty hand. Lord send me I like to spread your word around and all yes here I am proclaiming your name, your great and mighty hand, your wonders and your miracles each day. Glorify the Lord. In all the work he did, shout his glory to the air. Go out, rejoice, we're chosen by the Lord. And by the end, oh Lord, send me. I like to spread your word around in all the earth. Yes, here I am. Proclaiming your name, your great and mighty, your wonders and your miracles each day. Last one. Speak the same thing. Five one one. We'll stand up for this one. And we get Stephen to pray for us after this for our little presentation here this afternoon, yeah? Speak the same thing, be of the same mind. Take heed to this call. The unity that we have found is from the Lord. Now we have all been baptized into one body. There's only one God, one hope in the call. One Father who's above all. Body, one Spirit, both of your call. Let's keep and again. Speak the 
Thank you, praise you, Lord. All the people said? Oh, so you can remain standing for the presentation if you like. It's only an hour. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you a couple of things. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, band. Always. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, yeah, all right. It's a bit too cosy, that, Jamie, I think. A bit too cosy. Can we say, yeah, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll turn these ones off. I think we, uh, we're looking for trouble there, Jay, I think. <laughs> all right. Let's have the first one up, please, Reuben. Let's get into this. What's the time? Keep me on the time. Israel, Palestine, history explains. Listen, you can go on the BBC on this morning. I'll give you a timeline of what's been going on in Israel. The thing with timelines, if you don't go back to the beginning, you don't really get the full picture. Uh, to you. Most of these timelines just deal with recent uh, history. What we do know is, um, you know, how, who would, who would want to be in this part of the world today? Your heart goes out for people. And, and in here, just to make things very, very clear from the beginning, uh, when we do things about Russia and Ukraine, when we do things about Arab and Palestinian, uh, um, if, if an Arab comes to the door, he, he's going to receive what, what, what anybody else receives, or a Jew, or a Ukrainian, or a, we don't care, and the Lord doesn't care. He's not a respecter of persons, and neither do we. You know, it, when you see these things uh, on the TV set, your heart goes out to every person on wh whatever side of it is that's copping for it, isn't it? Really, you know? So it, it's not, we're, we're not, not here to take sides. We're not here to take sides at all. That's a mistake. And within Christianity, you know, I, I would say, if somebody asked me this question once, I said, I said, well, you know, um, I wouldn't want to stick up for one or the other, but I think I'm slightly biased towards the Jews because I read the Bible, you know, because they were God's people in the Bible. And I think you have to know you've got a bit of a bias inside you. Well, I've got, I've got a little bit of one myself. Anyway, let's just see if we can do something here for a bit of knowledge this afternoon. Yes, please. And that's it, isn't it? It's about the land that they call uh, Palestine. Now, the, the land of Israel, uh, uh, up until recent times, it was called Palestine. And, and that's, that's the crux of the matter. You know, you've got the Arab and you've got the Jew wrestling uh, over the land. So let, let's have a little look at what this wrestling match uh, really is about. We have to go back a little bit. Yes, please, Reuben. So these, these are some bit of, bit of a brief, they, they might not be quite that accurate, I've looked, I've looked at these dates, but it's, that's a brief overview of the history of Jerusalem, which is the capital of Palestine, capital of Israel, whichever way you want to frame it, it's the capital. And this is really the place where all the trouble uh, has been, you know. Um, so Jerusalem's history, the Canaanites and the Jebusites, they were down there, remember, uh, the Canaanites, uh, the, the, the children of Israel go into the, the promised land was Canaan's land, wasn't it? if we remember that. And one of those places was um, the Jebusites had hold of what became Jerusalem. So then after that, the Israelites, they were in to take the land with Joshua, remember? And then in 70 AD, the Romans kicked the Jews out of Judea. There's, 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 you know, there's times of captivity in between them with the Assyrians and the Babylonians, but they were always kind of there or thereabouts, you know? Um, and then uh, go through to further uh, history, uh, the Romans, the Byzantine, the Christians, the Muslims had it for a long period of time. Then you got the thing called the Crusades. They weren't Christian. The Crusades were not Christian. They were Catholic. And they were, they were uh, by the, uh, the, the ruler of Europe, who was the Pope, who was the head of the Catholic Church. That wasn't Christian. There was nothing Christian to do with that, really. Um, then the Muslims kicked the, um, uh, the Crusaders out again. And then in 1917, a very significant date in this region, uh, the British... 
um, uh, Jerusalem was liberated by the British army in the, the middle of World War One, and, and because the British were first on the scene, uh, they got to deal with um, Jerusalem and Palestine, which was a very, very difficult thing to deal with. They had a mandate there uh, up until 1948. In 1948, we got the declaration of the state of Israel, David Ben-Gurion and all these kind of people declared the state of Israel. So before that, before that date, in modern times, it was Palestine. Yeah, so we'll go through this as we go. Next one. Um, who's, who, well, who's, whose land is it anyway? You'd have to go right back to the beginning. Now, one thing we would say, uh, you, you, know, you know when Jesus is talking to the woman at the well of Samaria, She's going, you're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. You're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. You're... And she's polarising the conversation. That's what she's doing. You know, the Jews don't have any dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus completely ignores her. He, he said, if you knew who it was, uh, you'd ask for me living water. You know what I mean? And she gets on this promise, and she goes, oh, give me that living water. But then later on, he says, you worship, you know not what, salvation is of the Jews. So she, she was trying to put this question, you know, who's right and who's wrong. Now, Jesus does answer the question, but he doesn't make it the number one question because he just closed people's ears. So this lady was won by the promise of living water, of eternal life, and she carried on. And at the end of the conversation, Jesus says, by the way, the salvation is of the Jews. The Samaritans were parachuted in there. So he doesn't fail to answer the question. It's how he answers the question and where he puts it. The land of Israel, the land of Palestine, it was given to the Jews. It was given to the children of Israel by God in the Bible. So we're Bible believers, so we believe that because it's written in the Bible, not because of the righteous acts of any individuals. I'll give unto thee and to thy seeds after thee, says to Abraham, wherein you're a stranger, the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. Okay? So the Bible says that was their land, uh, and then we're going to have a little look who are the children of Abraham. Yeah? So next one, please. Share the son of Hagar the Egyptian which he'd born unto Abraham. So he's a son of Abraham as well. So it could possibly be, you know. And wherefore he said to Abraham, Get, cast out this bondwoman after her. The son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. So as we start to go down, there was two sons here for, uh, for Abraham. There was Ishmael with Hagar, the Egyptian maid, and there was Isaac, the child of promise. The child of promise was the one who inherits the land, the, the everlasting, the birthright, the everlasting promises, yeah, okay, and uh, Ishmael didn't, he did get some, he did get some, it's worth noting that these become J Jacob, and Jacob has 12 sons, he also has 12 sons, this fellow over here, Ishmael, he has, he has 12 sons, another good question Michael was asking me yesterday, the, the original ha inhabitants of the land, well maybe the people who were in the land before it was promised to the children of Israel, maybe they were Ishmaelites, or Edomites, well they weren't, uh, Ishmael goes down to the south uh, of the land of Israel or the land of Palestine, whichever you want to call it, and Edom goes to the south and the east. If you look around on a map today, you can see it, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and all the rest of it, Jordan. That's where Ishmael, it, it, tells you in the, it, it tells you in the Bible where they went and settled. They did not settle in Canaan. So there's no claim uh, that the, uh, the Arab peoples, the Ishmaelites, uh, were the residents of Canaan originally. They weren't. The Canaanites were different tribes all together and they were wicked by the way they were very very wicked the people next one so yeah then you move down the line then there's another two sons and you get the same kind of thing you know it says uh, and, and she's she's got this trouble inside her uh, and she goes to the lord she says what's going on inside me here lord and he says the lord said to her two nations are in your womb two manner of people be separated from your bowels one people will be stronger than the other people and the elder will serve the younger. And here we've got a, a character called Esau. Edom become the Edomites, the red people. And you've got Jacob, who becomes the Israel and the Israel people. He was the, he was the second born, he was the younger. And yet the younger was going to get the birthright promise. The birthright promise includes the Lord of Moses. And when we look down the line uh, and, and, and where we live today, you think of the Western world, having a democracy, they call it democracy, don't they? Really what it means is it's built on the law of Moses, of how to live communally. It's a better system than the law of the jungle. Really it is. Now the, that, that included, that birthright promise included how to run a nation. Yeah. So you can quite clearly see that the people who had this, this pattern and this law that came from God and applied that 
in their dealings in the nations uh, and in their own nations have an advantage to people who didn't have that. That's pretty clear to see. That, why do you think people are queuing up in boats, risking their lives to come over the English Channel to come and live in places like this? You know? So next one. So there you go. That's, that's the way it was. We could have Esau. He was also a son of Abraham. They become the Turks and the Palestinians. Ishmael, uh, he's the father of the Arabs. All the Arabs know that Ishmael is their father. And what's happened in the Quran uh, when Muhammad turns up, he switches this round. He switches this round. He says, no, it wasn't Isaac that got the blessing. It was Ishmael who got the blessing. He's the one who's got the birthright. This is the birthright. Yeah? So that's the claim. That's, that's the switch. That's the, much of the Quran um, is, is, is taken from the Old Testament but adjusted to suit, if you see what I mean. Um, so Jacob and Israel become uh, the, the, the 12 tribes. So two manner of peoples. They're different peoples. They're brothers. They've been at it since they were in their mother's womb. And they're still at it today. We can trace this whole conflict back to these two nations, these two brothers, these two manners of peoples, one who had the hip birthright and the other one who sold it out. Yeah? Okay. Next one. Uh, in Genesis 28, he says, Jacob obeyed his father. Uh, those who have the birthright do well to obey his father and mother. And he's gone to Pandanaram. And it says, and Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not his father, then, then Esau went into Ishmael and took to the wives which he had, the daughter of Ishmael. So straight away, we can see that uh, Esau, yeah, who, who sold out the birthright, he becomes the enemy. Uh, brothers, but become their enemy and their adversary. And Ishmael get together against who? Jacob, Israel, the seed of Abraham. Yeah, so that's the way it's been uh, since then. And you'll see that this continues on through time immemorial. Next one. So, you know, uh, Israel continues. They go in, Joshua, they take the land the Lord has given to Moses. And then they ask for a king and kings are given to them. And the second king after Saul is David. And uh, this is the first really mention uh, of Jerusalem, really. David and all of Israel went to Jerusalem, which is Jebus. So its original name was Jebus, and the Jebusites lived there. We, we heard about them. Where the Jebusites were, the inhabitants of the land, the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, you'll not come here. Nevertheless, David took the castle of Zion, which is the city of David, and David dwelt in the castle. Therefore, they called it uh, the city of David. If, you, if, you want, if we're going to go back to who's who and who claims what, you know, why is it called the city of David in the beginning? Because Jerusalem, oh, it, was, it had some walls and it was secured, but not like it is. So when we go back to the beginning, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the stronghold of Jerusalem, which means city of peace, by the way, city of peace, doesn't look like a city of peace to me. And it doesn't look like it's been, it's been a city of peace for many, many, many years. Yeah, the city of peace, there's no peace in there. But we can see a thousand BC, this is, that you lay in claim. So it's quite clear that the descendants, the children of Israel, uh, were the first really had the claim to the land. But God gave it to them, the Bible says. The Bible says. So we would agree with, we would agree, uh, with the Israelites on that side of things because we are agreeing with the Scripture, we're agreeing with the Bible, yeah. How they go about things, well, that's another story. Next one. Uh, however, it's not just that straightforward. So in Leviticus, I'll set my face against you and you'll be slain before your enemies. They that hate you, shall reign over you. Now, this is the Lord warning them and he's given them the law that if you turn away from me and turn away from me and, turn, and continually turn away from me, I'm going to kick you out. I'm going to kick you out and seven times punishment's going to come. If you will not for all this happen to me, I'll punish you seven times for your sins. And without getting too technical, seven is times three, seven is seven times, a time is a year, which is 360 days biblically, seven, three, seven times 360 is 2,000. 520 years and that term in the bible is known as the time of the gentiles when their enemies they that hate you shall reign well who hated them from the beginning Esau and ishmael they despised the birthright and they despised the one who'd who's had the birthright didn't they yeah so next one jesus talks about this in the gospels they'll fall by the edge of the sword they'll be led away captive into all nations jerusalem will be trodden down with the gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So up to this point, uh, although seven times punishment was going to come, people had been ruling over them, Assyrians, Babylonians, Greeks, 
Uh, now the Romans are coming, but they, they were still allowed really to be in, in their country in one form, usually uh, being taxed to bits by oppressive rulers, yeah? Uh, but now, uh, in AD 70, the Jews are out. Out you go. And you were not allowed to be a Jew in Jerusalem after this point until this term, the times of the Gentiles are going to be fulfilled. The times of the Gentiles is 2,520 years from a particular date. So we'll see what that date is. Yes, please. In 604 BC, Nebuchadnezzar comes down and he takes Judah and Jerusalem or begins to take it. So that's how the date begins at that time. If you add 2,520 years to the date 604 BC, when, they, when they, those that hated them began to rule over them, you get to a date called 1917 AD. And you can see the Medes and the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Muslims, the Turks, they've all been in charge in that area uh, uh, for, some, for, for all that period of time. The Jews were never allowed to rule themselves uh, in that. They'd, they'd let them come in. They'd let them come in once a year to, to, to pray at the Wailing Wall for one day of the year. That's that, uh, in later times. Next one. So there you go. 604 BC, the captivity begins. The seven times punishment. That seven times punishment, we go forward in time. And, and what happens exactly 2,520 years after this begins? Jerusalem, in the middle of the First World War, yeah, in the middle of the First World War, the Ottoman Turkish Empire, who uh, had sided with the Germans in the Second World in the First World War, they put their guns down. Listen to this. They put their guns down and they, they walked out of Jerusalem in the middle of the night and there was, the mayor of Jerusalem was walking around with a white flag looking to surrender to somebody. And apparently he, he surrendered to a British cook. Apparently. You know, I don't, I don't think the mass was any good, but anyway, he surrendered to him anyway. And also he surrendered to... The, this is a, an incredible thing. People, people were writing about this. People who were around at the time who were reading the Bible said, something's going to happen in Jerusalem in 1917 because it's prophesied the time's going to be up, and it did, in a most incredible way. Now, there's a whole, there's a whole presentation we could do at that as birds flying. I will pass over and I will deliver Jerusalem. Uh, and he did. And, he, uh, and you, you know, so uh, General Allenby, he, he didn't ride into um, uh, Jerusalem through the Jaffa Gate uh, because he thought uh, that he believed that God had delivered the city. The general, the British general, he believed, he said, I'm, go I'm not going to ride in here like Alexander the Great, like a conqueror, because I didn't conquer it. It was a humility thing uh, that came in. So 1917, the captivity, the, the seven times punishment ends. And um, from this point on, because the British are now in charge, the Jews, who were, who were having a hard time in Russia, in Eastern Europe, and all over the place, there's all kinds of conspiracy theories about the Jews, they start to come home to their homeland. It's still called Palestine, yeah? But now the British are in charge, and things are slightly different. Next one, please. 1917, uh, the Ottomans flee after 400 years. It's, you, you can read it for yourself. It's an incredible event, yeah? And uh, that, that was fulfilling Bible prophecy, which we haven't got time to go into today. But that fulfills Bible prophecy as well. So not, not just the, 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 the seven times, the end of the seven times is also uh, being fulfilled too. Uh, between 1923 and 1948, Jewish population rises from 9% to 27%. Uh, as the Jews, because the Jews are now being allowed to return because the British have got the mandate uh, down there in Israel, so things are changing, things are changing. There's a bit of order coming in. It wasn't without opposition, by the way. The people of the land didn't like it. The Palestinian Arabs uh, didn't like it. And there was all kinds of uh, shenanigans going on there. Uh, you know, they were fighting each other. They were fighting the British. They were all fighting each other, uh, really. It was very, very uh, troubled times. But you can see the population... It begins to swell. Now, after uh, Mr. Adolf Hitler comes on the scene and proceeds to wipe out six million Jews um, in the Holocaust, uh, what an incredible... People should not forget this. Pe I tell you what, the people in Israel don't forget it. Uh, after, after that, you can imagine uh, that the people who fled uh, such a, a terrible situation would have wanted to go home to Palestine, home to Israel. So then the population really swells and that's what happened next one so post holocaust more jews flee to palestine the un i can't remember it might have been the um something else it might have been 
the preseason. But anyway, votes Palestine to divided into two states. So what he said was, I think it's the League of Nations. They said, okay, all these Jews have come in now. This is a terrible thing has happened in Europe. Uh, obviously, you've got two different types of peoples in here. Let's make two states down there. And the Jews said, okay, yeah. And the Arabs said, not on your nelly. Yeah, not on your nelly, he said. Yeah, so that, that was rejected by the, the Arabs. The Jews were quite, would have been quite happy at that point in time to accept that, yeah. 1948, the Jews declared the state of Israel. David Ben-Gurion and the rest of them. Israel war begins. So that's the first Arab-Israeli war, 1948, because they declared the state. And it was not just Arabs in Palestine. It was Arabs that, that surrounded Jordanians, Saudis. You know, there was quite a bit going on at that particular time. The Israelites won. The Israelites won. Next one. Uh, going further in history, the 1967, um, Egypt, Syria, Jordan. There'd been something happened in the Suez Canal in the 50s as well, which, which was quite a bit of a problem with Egypt. And after that, Gaza really is part of Egypt now. And the West Bank, what they call that, that, that bit in the West Bank, that actually really belonged to Jordan. Uh, uh, so the segregation. Uh, the territory, so there's another... There's a, the, 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 um, 90, the six day wars, after six days, the Jews won again. They were attacked and they won again. And uh, when they won, they increased their territory by nearly four times, somewhere between three and four times. Uh, next one. 1973, Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, they were attacked in their holy day, in their feast day, you know what I mean? You know, when everyone's having a day off and not expecting it. The attack that happened last week uh, that, that began this latest round, I think it was the beginning of Shavuot. Uh, I think it was the beginning of one of the holy days. So they wouldn't have, ex again, they wouldn't have expected it, you know. Uh, Yom Kippur, Egypt and Syria conflict, USA and Russia begin to arm either side. So now, uh, because of Suez and because of, um, uh, in, the, in the Suez crisis, the Russians, and they were going down and, you know, building projects for the Egyptians. So there was a, a league there. And then, um, you know, the elder Americans and the British, they got a bit wary of that because there's this hostility. So now, really, these, these two states are being backed by two bigger states. Isn't it funny that Britain and America and Europe want to back the Israelis? Never wondered that. Well, that's because it's another story again. But that's because the children of Israel dispersed into the British Isles and into Northern Europe and down into the Antipodes and over into America. So it's no surprise that these kind of uh, these are cousins, they're related, they're tribal, it's tribal stuff uh, that goes on. And he saw really, uh, and the Reds and the, the, you know, the, um, the Russians have got a link as well. So we Russians shouldn't be surprised that we kind of see these links coming down the line into the present day and playing out. Uh, next one. 2003, new conflict begins, international concern of conflict sp spreading to a, a troubled region. And anything, you notice that on the news when something happens down in Jerusalem and down in Israel, you know, everybody, all the alarm bells are ringing. Why are all the alarm bells ringing? Because they all know that the Bible says that Jesus is coming and it's going to happen in Jerusalem. And everyone believes it really. Everyone believes it really. You can tell that by the way they report it, you know. Next one. There you go. So you can call that the Palestinian loss of land or the Israeli gain of land, you know, over that period of time. So 1946, um, you know, the, 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 um, the, the Jews have gone back in there and those white dots uh, would be where, where the Jewish uh, communities had secured at that time in the first one. Then the United Nations plan, which was rejected, say, OK, well, we kind of divide it up a little bit. 1949, after the State of Israel declared itself a state to the 1967 uh, war, you know, uh, you can see that Israel is just taking, taking more and more. The more and more they were attacked, the more land they gained. Uh, in, the, in the modern times and 2011 so that's kind of like what we're in now the, the Gaza Strip being in green uh, and the parts of the West Bank Jerusalem is kind of an international city they say yeah next one and there you go the Lord's not in it I don't care I don't care which which bias any one person might have in it this is bringing up some very strong emotions and very strong feelings you know what I mean um, you know the Lord's not in any of that. God's not in any of that. So whoever side people want to be on, they're on the wrong side if you're on, if you're on one of those sides. And, you know, certainly people rejoicing in, in London uh, at the wicked uh, acts that are being perpetrated is just, uh, you know, it's beyond, it beggars belief. Whichever side 
uh, is getting battered. Uh, who, who would who would who would rejoice about that in another country to see such things? That tells you the nature of some of these uh, people. That's just wickedness. Yeah, next one. So that's the story today. It was today's newspapers on the BBC. Those was. Um, Psalm 83, the interesting psalm, they've said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance. This is prophecy, really. They've consulted together with one consent, the confederates against you, the tabernacles of Edom, the tabernacles of Ishmaelites, of Moabites, the Hagarines, remember Hagar, and, you know, uh, Gebal, Ammon, Amalek, the Philistines. And this map on the other side would be a representation of where these kind of peoples are are today without being very exact you know it doesn't kind of quite work that they still live in the same house that they lived in four thousand years ago it doesn't, doesn't work like that but the areas are so we can find out where these people are uh, let's cut them off that there'll be no more a nation let's take away uh, the name of well, let's let's all join up with one consent and that would be our aim to do this to cut these people off and you can see that that's who, who those roughly that's who those people would be uh, today and that's where they would be in these countries israel is surrounded Israel is surrounded. Next one. Yeah, 1967, after the Six-Day War, uh, the Khartoum Resolution, the Three No's, it's the famous for the Three No's. The Arab League of Nations, so all the Arab nations get together, and it's like our United Nations, but it's only for the Arabs and the certain things that they uh, agree on. And it says, there'll be no peace with Israel, no recognition of Israel, and no negotiations with Israel. That's the cartoons. That was that, that was what the Arab League said that they were going to do. There's no, they were not going to. Uh, we don't even recognise these people as a state. So when you had the the feather in Iran saying, uh, you know, Israel should be wiped off the, the, the face of the map. Some of them still believe that. But yet, yeah, next one, please, Reuben. So in recent years, many of the Arab states are promoting closer ties and the acceptance of Israel. I think the UAE is is kind of leading the way on that, and. Uh, is that one of the factors in the present recent events to frustrate this process? So some of the Arab countries, the wealthier Arab countries, are saying, well, hang on, let's just do business with Israel. Let's forget all this. You know what I mean? What, what, what's, all, what's the point of all of this? And you think to yourself, uh, when they're making these noises of let's have a little bit of peace and let's forget about our nose from the, from the Khartoum resolution, why don't we kick off to stop making the peace? I don't know. I don't know, but it seems to make a bit of sense that they can, maybe the people who are in charge down there, the Hamas people and the Hezbollah people, uh, are quite afraid now that they're losing their, their brothers, their Ishmaelite uh, uh, brothers and their Hashemite brothers in Jordan. Who knows? So, uh, next one. So Canaan was promised to Abraham's seed. That seed came through Jacob, not through Esau or, or uh, Ishmael and the land of Israel forever. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Ishmael and Esau were confederates to oppose after losing the birthright. They despised the birthright, and they despised the people who had the birthright. And we're talking about these people who have turned into nations and peoples now. Israel were removed from the land in AD 70. The times of the Gentiles ended in 1917. The Jews are going back to this land, now what we call the land of Israel, and the birthright conflict will continue until Jesus' return. It's as simple as that. People coming up with all of these, you can't make peace with people. If you really want to know what the Hamas people say uh, about this two-state, because everyone keeps saying this, there's a solution to this, make a two-state Israel, is what they said back in the 1940s. But Hamas say, no, there's no two-state solution. They've got to go. <laughs> it's as simple as that. You can't negotiate with people like that. That's not happening. It's, it's just not happening. So it's a, it's a massive, massive conundrum uh, for the world, you know? And uh, the Bible declares this anyway, we can be sure. Next one. In Zechariah, in the latter chapters, chapters 12 to 14, he's really talking about the rebuilding of, of, of Jerusalem at, at that time, that Jerusalem's going to be rebuilt. He's, he says to Zechariah, you know, it's going to be re rebuilt, uh, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, we sing that one, don't we? Shall this? And he's, he's telling them that the house of God is going to be restored in the days of Nehemiah and that kind of thing. He's also prophesying of the Lord coming on his return and gathering all nations, the Mount of Olives cleaving in two, the last day's destruction, um, and, and living waters. Read them for yourself. It's quite, it's quite, you have to be a little bit careful because it's dealing with the current situation that Isaiah is in and the Babylonian captivity and Jerusalem at that point. But he's also very, very clearly talking about the future state. The Mount of Olives haven't never cleaved in two. 
and, and Jesus, Jesus' feet haven't stood on it coming down from heaven and the big rift valley opening up up to this point. So it's quite clear that Zechariah is dealing with a current event in, in Bible prophecy history and the events to come, which uh, is knocking at our door. Next one, please. Uh, I'll gather all nations. I'm going to gather all the nations. They're all come, like it or not. And they're all, the British Navy are going down there, and Americans are going down there. Mr. Putin's coming over there as a peacekeeper. Oof, good luck with that, Mr. Putin. You know, they're all being drawn in, aren't they? It's not something that people choose or people want. This is Bible prophecy uh, that we're seeing. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like a gay. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to make people overly alarmed. Oh, this is it, this is it, this is it. It's not like that, but we just want to see. The Bible did prophesy of these things. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Woo! I'd like to see that. Goodness me. The Lord's going to turn up. His feet will stand in that day on the Mount of Olives before Jerusalem. The Mount of Olives will cleave in the midst and there'll be a great, a very great valley. And we know that the Rift Valley false land, the fault line, it runs down through Turkey, 25 miles east or west. I think it's east of Jerusalem. And it runs down then into the east coast of Africa and down there. It's a, it's a well-known fault line. The earth's going to open up, the Bible says. It's like, when you look at it from outer space, it's like a big scar, like a big scar on, 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 on the face of the earth. You can see it. If that hasn't happened yet, well, that's going to happen. And that's connected to a lot of nations being drawn in uh, to, to a fight at Jerusalem. Next one. Oh, where did that one come from? Uh, future states. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we don't put, yeah, but it's true. It says that this will be the plague where with the Lord will smite the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Draw all nations down there. Jerusalem's a cup of trembling, a burdensome stone, it says, and uh, their flesh will consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes will consume away in their holes, and their tongues will consume away in their mouth. There's only, there's only one thing that that can mean, and that's what happens when a nuclear bomb goes off and the radiation goes off. If you want to know the account of it, there's a book called Hiroshima, and it's the account of six people who survived the bomb, and the first thing that happened, he meets these uh, Japanese soldiers, and uh, they had no eyes, and they had no tongues. They were still alive, on their feet because of the, the first blast. And he takes, um, he takes a leaf, he takes a leaf and makes a funnel out of the leaf and pours the water straight down into the gullet because he had no tongues. And with, that's what radiation does. Anything that's, anything that's made of water, your eyes, your tongue, it, it dissolves them while you stand on your feet. As terrible as that is, that's what's coming. In the New Testament, it says the elements will melt with a fervent heat. It's talking about the great and terrible day of the Lord. That's not the Lord setting off nuclear bombs. That's mankind down here. Very clever mankind that he's done down here. Uh, that's what's coming. That's, that's what's coming. You, you know, you, people don't talk about it anymore, uh, nuclear war. They talk a lot about it in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. But it's coming. And it's coming at Jerusalem. Uh, the Bible has, has prophesied of it. So uh, Pillars of Smoke it talks about uh, in, the, in the book of Joel prophesied. That, was, that looks like pretty much like a pillar to me. Next one. Palm tree, it means. It'll be in that day, living waters will go out of Jerusalem, half towards the former sea, half towards the Hindu sea, summer and winter. The Lord will be king over all the earth. Here's the good stuff coming. We heard about living water today. Out of your belly will flow uh, a, liver, a river of living water. But when Jesus comes back and he puts it all to right, he's the king. Game over. Game over. No more fighting anymore, boys. I'm in charge now. Uh, the king of Jerusalem, the king of peace. Jesus returns. And then uh, he starts to clean everything up from Jerusalem and the waters issue out and things start to be thousand years rule and reign uh, with Jesus upon the earth until he's cleaned everything up and then he hands the kingdom uh, up to the Father. That's the future to come. Next one. Yeah. There's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord is overall unto and, uh, and rich to all that call upon him. Come on in, Mr. Arab. Come on, Mr. Jew. Come on, Mr. Ukraine. Come on, Mr. Russia. Come on, whoever you are. Catholic, Protestant, more. We don't care who you are. Come on in. The Lord will be good to you. He's been good to us, and he'll be good to you. So all of these things, we've got no side. We've got, we're on God's side. We're not on the side of one or the other. We're on God's side. We're on the gospel side. Uh, the, the, the place of refuge, like we've heard today, the place of peace. That's whose side we're on. God's side. And God's not on any of their sides, I can tell you that. Next one. Many of the words, save yourselves from this untoward generation. So people are, are, are confused, people are upset, people are hot under the collar, you know what I mean? Leg it, uh, get out of it, and come over here and calm down yourself uh, through the Holy Ghost experience, isn't it? Untoward means scoliosis, it's crooked. The world is a crooked place, 
and it's not getting straighter as we go along. Uh, so anyone putting their hopes in things getting much, much upright and straighter uh, are very much going to be disappointed. Next one, please. You're a chosen generation, a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So there's, there's no Jewish nation, there's no Arab nation, there's no this nation. There's a holy nation that's called God's people. If you want to become a child of God, uh, the Lord is ready uh, to adopt you into his tribe, into his family, and we become a holy nation now. All different colours, all different backgrounds, all different ages, all different types. One people, one body, one spirit, one people, one law, one faith, one baptism. Isn't it? You know, it's such an easy solution being born again. It solves all the problems, doesn't it? I think I'll run for uh, Prime Minister of the United Nations. I'm, I'm going up there next week, Bob. I'm going to apply for the job. You vote for me, Bob. All right, you all right. I'll, I'll, I'll tell him you sent me, Bob. We'll see what, see what I get. You know what I mean? Don't hold your breath. Next one. Uh, okay, so just a summary. A little bit longer than we thought. Uh, just a summary of the main points. The land was promised to the seed of Abraham in the Bible. So the Bible says, uh, the children of Israel inherit Ishmael and Esau in Esau. The Bible says that. The Bible says that, yeah. Ongoing conflict continues until Jesus returns. No peace. No peace down there. Yeah. The Jews do not have a covenant with God anymore. That's very important to understand this. Uh, God moved out uh, when, when Jesus gave up the ghost and the veil in the temple was rent in two. God moved out of that Old Testament situation. There's, there's promises to the land of uh, Israel. There's promises about Jerusalem. But he has, they have not got a covenant with, with uh, the God of the Bible anymore. The God, the God, of, the, the God of the Bible has a New Testament uh, covenant. A new covenant we will make with them. I'll write me laws on their hearts, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, so so we have to remember that uh, these people do not have a covenant with God. It's just that God's Bible promises are still in force. Yeah, uh, next one. It's the fulfilment of Bible prophecy when we look at it from from that point of view, uh, without taking sides for any which one. We just say, well, the Bible said that, and it's happening. So that gives us makes us feel calm, makes us feel confident. The Bible says all the other things the Bible said they're true as well. Nineteen seventeen is the fulfilment of the seven times punishment. I think it's pretty, I don't think you find much of an argument, really, uh, that that's the case. Uh, you're entering the final days until Jesus returns. Final days could be 10 minutes, 10 days, 10 weeks, 10 years. I don't know. I just don't know. You know, it's not like that. Uh, but we are at the times at the end, aren't we? Next one. There's only one way to be on the right side of it, and that's the born again. Only the gospel's got the solution. There's no other solutions, yeah? Uh, God's not a respect of the persons, like we said, Arab, Jew, Russian, Ukrainian, you're all welcome in the kingdom of God. And all the people said, Amen. that'll do donkey. All right. Okay, so we just stand up. Hope that's informative. Uh, got any questions? Go and see Bob after the meeting. Yeah. All right. We might just get Sean there at the front to, uh, to pray for us, please, Sean. Yeah. Praise your Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Praise your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. All the people said? Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Are we going? Oh, sorry, as well. Yeah, just after the, uh, after the meeting, uh, if anybody wants to go for a walk down the marina...